So today I'm giving, I will be giving you uh, examples of calculations on how to do uh, or how to analyze and design a reinforced concrete beam. No? So for single reinforced MUNA and that is for ultimate strength design. Now, <clears throat> there are two types of calculations. So the first one is we have investigation or simply the analysis or structural analysis or sorry, the analysis of a given design na. And then we have what we call the design itself. So when we say investigation, meron na tayong given na parameters, meron na tayong section ng beam, meron na tayong bilang ng bakal, and we will just be analyzing its capacity. So gaano ba kalakas yung, or gaano kalaki yung moment capacity na kaya niyang dalhin. But when we say design, we will be given the uh, loads, can be the factored load then you will design the given uh, you will design your section based on the given load so reminder lang uh, if you don't have or any knowledge or hindi pa ganun ka okay yung knowledge natin about reinforced concrete please uh, review first or uh, view first yung video na una kong ginawa so yung link nun andito sa baba okay now Let's start first with investigation. So in this investigation, we are to determine the ultimate moment capacity of the beam with the following parameters. So we have here your breadth or your width natin, which is 300 millimeters. <clears throat> then we have your effective depth, which is 450 millimeters. Again, the effective depth is just defined from the compression most fiber hanggang doon sa centroid ng reinforcement. <clears throat> then we have here the area of the steel reinforcement, meron tayong apat na number 20 or 20 mm diameter. Then we have your specified compressive strength to be 21 megapascal and the yield strength of the steel which is 400 megapascal. So in this case, ang unang-una natin ginagawa is we need to assume na yung, yung uh, steel reinforcement natin will actually yield. So ang assumption still reinforcement will yield. So, lagay natin. So, assume still yields. Okay? So, in that case, so, galing doon sa topic na diniscuss natin from the other video. Huh? So, drawing na lang muna natin yung stress diagram para mas maintindihan. So, we have here your Whitney equivalent compression block so your rectangle na siya which has a magnitude of 0 0.85 fc prime with a depth of a which is just equal to beta 1c so this is your t okay so and for the compression part this is c which is just equal to stress multiplied by the area. So this is uh, 0.85 FC prime AB. So from the figure, we can say that this is the depth of the compression block. So ito po yung tinatamaan ng compression block natin. However, this is your neutral axis. No? With a depth of C. Okay. So since we are to assume first that the steel yield we can say that T is just equal to ASFY. So, kung hindi siya mag yield we should use FS. FS is the actual stress na dinadala mismo nung bakal natin. So, dahil nga mag assume muna tayo na mag yield siya, we can assume that FS is just equal to FY. So, in this case, sabi natin from the previous uh, video, kailangan mapanantili natin to in equilibrium. So, if we take the summation of forces horizontal, we can say that C is just equal to T. So, we have here 0 0.85 FC prime AB equals ASFY. Now, let's determine the depth of the compression block. So, A is just equal to ASFY divided by 0 0.85 of FC prime B. So, lahat po yan given. Ano po ba yung AS natin? AS is apat na 20. So that will just give you 4 multiplied by 
pi over 4 times 20 squared. So cancel 4. So AS will just give you uh, 20 squared, 400, 400 pi. So the unit is in square millimeter. Okay, now we can now compute for the value of A. Okay, so substitute lang naman natin. We have here uh, your AS, that is 400 pi, multiplied by FY, which is 400, divided by 0.85 of FC prime, which is 21, times B, which is 300 in this given. So A is just equal to 93.87 millimeters. So that is the depth of the compression block. And since this is equal to beta 1c, we can determine the location of the neutral axis from the topmost fiber. So, ano ba yung value ng C natin? So, in our, in our previous video, sinabi natin that if the specified compressive strength, F prime C, is less than 28, we can use beta 1 to be 0 0.85. So, in that case, C is just equal to 110.43 millimeters. Okay. So, remember, the first na ginawa natin is we assume that the steel yield. Okay. So, ngayon, i-check natin siya kung nag ba talaga siya. So, drawing ulit natin yung beam natin. So, we have here your beam. Again, this is the area of the steel reinforcement. This is your effective depth D. Tapos, i-drawing din natin yung strain diagram natin. Okay. So, from the strain diagram, this is 0 0.003. Again, that is the maximum strain of, a, of the concrete. <coughs> then, we have here the strain of the steel reinforcement. Okay. So, sabi natin kanina, this is your distance C or the depth of the neutral axis or the location of the neutral axis from the compression most fiber says since mula dito hanggang dito sa point na to that is your effective depth D so obviously this is just D minus C so in that case we can use again ratio and proportion so we have here strain ng steel uh, divided by C uh, sorry D minus C equals 0 0.003 divided by C. Okay? And again, we all know that the strain of the steel is just equal to Fs over Es. Or Es is for metric, that's 200 gigapascal or 200,000 MPa. So substituting, we have here your Fs over Es cross multiply ko yung D minus C, that will give you 0 0.003 multiplied by D minus C over C. Or, since we all know the value of ES, we can say that ES is just actually equal to 600 times D minus C over C. Okay, so, bakit ko to kinuha? Kasi, remember, sabi ko kanina, FS is the actual stress of your tensile reinforcement. While Fy here is your yield strength. So, paano na ba natin malalaman kung nag-yield talaga yung bakal? Obviously, mag-yield yung bakal if the actual stress exceeds its strength, which is the yield strength. So, if Fs is now greater than the value of Fy, we can say that the steel yields. Okay, so, big sabihin, tama yung assumption natin. However, kung Fs is less than uh, FY, therefore, the steel does not yield. So, ulit-ulit tayo dito sa assumption natin dito kasi nga, hindi naman pala siya ng yield. So, ibig sabihin, yung inassume natin, hindi totoo. Okay? That's why we are checking. Now, ano ngayon yung value ng FS natin? So, let's just substitute. So, that dahil meron naman tayong effective depth D, which is 450 millimeters, we have also the computed value of C. Huh? So, let's now compute. So that will just give you uh, 
600 times we have D that is 450 minus C ang C po natin is 110.43 divide by 110.43 okay then we have 1844.99 megapascal and as you can see it exceeds no it exceeds your FY. Therefore, we can say that the tension still yields. So, tama yung assumption natin. Hindi na natin siya uulitin. Okay? So, again, in our previous discussion, dinadetermine talaga natin yung value ng FS din para malaman natin later kung ano yung kung saan siya papasok. If it's compression controlled, under transition, or under uh, comp compression control under transition or under tension control. Okay? So now, <coughs> we now have the value of Fs. And dahil nga napatunayan natin na nag-yield talaga yung bakal, tama na kagad yung assumption natin dito. So dahil dun, we can now compute for the nominal moment. Okay? So again, from the figure, kung makikita nyo dito, meron lang tayong mom uh, moment arm or yung couple arm natin, which is D minus A over 2. Bakit A over 2? Na-discuss ko nito sa previous video, pero ulitin lang natin. Since the uh, height of the compression block is A, and we have here your uh, force C, or the compressive force, obviously that force acts at the centroid of our figure na tinatamaan, or yung area na tinatamaan mismo nung stress natin. So this, since this is rectangle, obviously yung height niyan is just uh, height over 2 or A over 2. So since this is both D minus A over 2, so that will give you your couple R. So in this case, we can say that the nominal moment is just equal to uh, T multiplied by D minus A over 2 or pwede rin C multiplied by D minus A over 2. So Let's say in this problem, let's use compression. Okay, so we have 0 0.85 of FC prime AB multiplied by D minus A over 2. Again, katulad ng sinabi ko in our previous video, kahit alin dyan yung gamitin nyo, okay lang yun. Okay, so we now have your nominal moment. Okay, so we have here, uh, let's just substitute, no? We have uh, 0.85 multiplied by FC prime, which is 21, multiplied by A. In this case, yung A na nakumpit natin kanina is true, no? dahil nga nag naman talaga siya, multiplied by B, which is 300, multiplied by D. In this case, that is 450 minus A over 2. So that is, A again is 93.87 divided by 2. Okay. So that will give you 202,000 or 202.61 times 10 raised to 6. Anong unit? Yung force natin kanina is in newtons and yung distance is in millimeters. So this is uh, actually 202.61 kilonewton meter. Okay. So... That is the, the case, no? Ganun lang tayo mag-investigate if uh, for singly reinforced beam. Ngayon, uulitin ko, kung hindi daw po mag-yield yung bakal, we need to uh, use FS here. Okay? So, ano yung gagawin kong FS that will become 600 times D minus C? Then, sa kanyo palang masasolve yung value ng C here. Okay? That will be the actual C. Kasi nga, hindi, na, hindi siya nag -heal. And that is another case. Okay? I guess I will do that on another video. Okay? But in this video, I'll just give you one example. So, the next, this is how we compute or how we investigate the nominal moment capacity. By the way, ang hinahanap po pala dito is the ultimate. No? So, in this case, Based on sa pinag-usapan natin last video, no, we need to multiply to determine the value or the ultimate moment capacity. 
we need to multiply it by or we need to multiply the nominal moment capacity to, redu to the reduction factor. So, last time, sabi natin, if, singit ko na lang dito, no? if it's compression control, your strength reduction factor is 0 0.65. If it's tension controlled, that is 0 0.9. And, with, and if it's under transition, it's just equal to 0 0.65 plus 0 0.25 multiplied by Fs minus Fy over 1,000 minus Fy. So, dinerive natin to last time. No? And sinabi rin natin na masasabi natin siya na transition, ah sorry, masasabi natin siya na tension controlled if the strain exceeds 0 0.005. Ngayon, pag binultiply natin yung strain na yun ng 200,000, yung ES natin, that is actually 1,000. So, sabi, ibig sabihin, kung yung FS natin or yung actual FS natin exceeds 1,000, obviously, it is now under tension control. So, ang gagamitin ko lang pala dito na reduction factor is now 0 0.9. Therefore, your ultimate moment capacity is yung nakuha natin na MN times 0.9 lang. So, in this case, this is just 182. 0.35 kilonewton meter. And this is now your ultimate moment. So let's now consider design. So kanina, nagsagot tayo kung paano or nag-calculate tayo, nag-perform tayo kung paano yung na-analyze and, and investigate yung isang given na section and to determine the nominal moment capacity and the ultimate moment capacity. Now we will now be doing a design. Okay? So in design, sabi nga natin kanina, when we say design, you have a given load and you will design uh, your beam na nakadepende dun sa load natin. Now, in this case, we have we need to design a rectangular reinforced concrete beam, SRB, or single reinforced beam lang, that will adequately support the load as shown. So we have here a simply supported beam. We have here WSD as a superimposed dead load. Then we have here a live load of 15 kilonewton meter. The span of the beam is 6 meters. So, yung subscript nito is SD, meaning superimposed dead load lang. Nangyayari yan kasi, for example, uh, we have here a beam. We have a beam, tapos, uh, obviously, nagdadala rin siya ng mga dead loads na nakapatong sa kanya. Kaya nga siya tinawag na superimposed, katulad ng mga walls. Okay, so, papansin nyo, wala pa pong self-weight. Obviously, wala pang self-weight kasi wala pa nga tayong dimension. Yun pa lang yung kukumpitin natin. So, in this case, ang wala po tayo are the di dimensions of the beam and at the same time, yung area po ng steel reinforcement. So, in that case, dahil nga marami tayong unknown, meron tayong tinatawag na uh, initial parameters na kailangan natin i-assume. So, for example, in this case, ang assumption ko is Nagamit ako ng rho, which is 0.75 ng rho max, and b, which is 0.75 ng d. Again, these are just assumptions. Nakadepende po siya sa discretion ng designer. Okay? So, pwede mag -iba, iba yung sagot natin because we can assume different uh, parameters. Okay? Now, in this case, okay, what we need to do is to assume a value of rho. Okay? So, in our our previous in our previous uh, video sinabi na natin doon kung ano yung raw max so yung raw max lang natin is 51 over 140 multiplied by fc prime over fy multiplied by beta 1 so in this case we can now compute for raw max your fc prime is 20.7 megapascal your FY is 345. Remember this, ha? we are not using grade 60, but we are using grade 50, which is approximately 345 megapascal. Then we will be having beta 1. In this case, beta 1 is just equal to 0 0.85. Bakit? Kasi sabi nga natin in our last video, in, the com in computing beta 1, beta 1 is 0 0.85 if your specified compressive strength of concrete or F prime C or F C prime is less than 28 megapascal. So in this case, we can now compute for the value of raw max. So we have uh, uh, 51 
times FC prime which is 20.7 multiplied by beta 1 which is 0.85 divided by 140 times Fy or Fy is 345. No? So we now have here, let's have uh, 5 decimal places, 0, 1, 8, 5, 8. Okay. Now, sabi niyan, yung initial row natin is 0.75 of row max. Again, this is just an assumption. At saka later, pwede naman siya magbago. Okay, so that's 0 0.75. It's upon the discretion of the designer. So you have 0 0.01393. Okay. Now, we now have the value of our row. So, big sabihin, ang kulang na lang natin is the dimension BD. Now, we all know that MN is equal to Rn BD squared. So, ginamit natin yan kanina in our design of ah, sorry, investigation ng singly. Diniscuss na rin natin yan yung formula na yan with the uh, the coefficient of resistance doon sa previous video natin. Now, since we have rho, sabi natin in our previous video, we have rho equal 0.85 of Fc prime over Fy multiplied by 1 minus the square root of 1 minus 2rn over 0.85 of Fc prime. Okay, so in this case, we can compute for the value of rho. Ah, sorry, we can compute for the value of rn. Bakit? Kasi we will be using the initial assumption of rho here. Okay, so let's now compute. You have here your row that's uh, 0 0.013933 times Fy cross multiply times 345 divided by 0.85 divide natin ng Fc prime which is 20.7 then 1 minus answer square natin then 1 minus answer or let okay times 0.85 times 20.7 ikaw cross multiply ulit divide by 2 so Rn here is 4.15027 okay now since that is our Rn we can now compute for BD squared pero kailangan muna natin ng MN so saan magagaling MN? obviously meron tayong load okay so in this case, pwede natin makumpute yung factored load natin or the ultimate uniform load. And that is just 1.2 ng dead load. In this case, superimposed lang plus 1.6 of double L. So we have here 1.2 times 10 plus 1.6 times 15. So we have here 36 kilonewton per meter. Take note na wala pa tayong self-reach at. Okay? Kasi nga, wala pa tayong section. So in this case, we can compute for MU since simply supported yan. That is just WL squared over 8. So you're right. That's, uh, since this is 6 times uh, 36, 6 squared kasi, divided by 8. So we'll be having 162 kN meter. Okay? Since we all know in our discussion of the previous video, that the factor moment or the ultimate moment must be less than 2 the reduction factor, strength reduction factor multiplied by the nominal moment capacity. This is your actual load and this is your resistance load. Now, for the beam to be economical, we must use its full potential. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, we can actually equate this. VMN. So, MN is just equal to or we will be using the reduction factor here to be 0 0.9. Why? Kasi we need to assume first that the beam will undergo tension control. Okay, so, or para, uh, or tension control. Okay, so that's divided by 0 0.9. So that will give you 180 kN meter, or that is 180 times 10 raised to 6 newton millimeter. So we can now compute for BD squared. No? Substituting uh, R, Rn and uh, Mn, we can now compute for the value of BD squared. So that's this is times 100,000 squared. 
divided by 4.15027. So we have 4337067.27. So again, we have here a parameter. It is again upon the discretion of the designer that B is 0 0.75. So that will be substituting it here, that will give you 0 0.75 d cubed, d times d squared. So equals 4337067.27. So we have d here to be 0.75, then we have cube root. We have here 386.70 millimeters. Okay, so we can now compute for the value of each. So, paano natin ko compute yung value ng each? Remember, we need to design a rectangular section. Okay, so we have here your AS. We have here your B. We have your total heights of the beam. And we have also the effective depth D. Again, the effective depth D is just the... Uh, distance from the compression most fiber up to the centroid of the steel reinforcement. Ngayon, paano natin kukunin yung H? Okay, paano natin ngayon kukunin yung value natin ng H? So, sabi natin, based on, again, on the given parameter, we are to assume that the beam is inside the structure. So, importante ba yun? Yes. No? Because we have what we call, according to ACI and NSCP code, what we call the clear covers. Okay? yung clear cover natin nakadepende kung nasan yung structure natin saan ba siya exposed okay so it is actually divided into three main parts no yung it can be exposed to weather it can be inside the structure or it can be permanently exposed to to earth so if a beam is permanently exposed to earth the minimum clear cover must be 75 millimeters while if it's inside the structure it should be uh, 40 millimeters Kung nasa labas naman siya, let's say, permanent, uh, sorry, exposed to weather, nakadepende po yung clear cover kung ano yung bar diameter natin. Pero ano ba yung clear cover? Clear cover is the distance mula sa pinakambaba ng beam natin or mula sa outermost part ng beam natin, can be dito, no? hanggang dito sa pinakambaba ng beam natin. At pinakambaba ng reinforcement. So this is actually your clear cover. So kung mapapansin nyo, yung each pala natin, is just equal to the effective depth D plus yung kalahati ng bakal plus the clear cover. So in this case, meron tayong D. Yung computed D natin. So H is equal to 386.70. We are to assume, let's say, na ang gagamitin natin is 20 mm na bakal. So actually, ito nakadepende ito kung Ano yung gusto ng designer? Depende kasi kung malaki yung air ng bakal, pwede natin palaki yung diameter para kumunti yung bilang ng bakal. But for the sake of our discussion, let's use 20 mm, or number 20 in metric, no? na bar diameter. So that's 386.7, then kalahati nun, plus 1 half of 20, plus the minimum clear cover as required by the code, kung nasa loob ng structure, that will be 40 millimeters. So H is... We have here 386.7 plus 10 plus 40. So that will give you 436. No? 0.7 millimeters. So syempre, hindi naman tayo pwedeng... Remember, it, it, yung H natin is the dimension of the beam. Hindi naman tayo pwedeng gumawa ng forma na 436.7. Pwede, pero... Sobrang masinsin na yun. Ang hirap i-measure yun during construction or yung formworks natin. So, more or less, nire-round off natin to. So, obviously, we'll be rounding it up. No? So, round up natin, nakadepende. No? So, sometimes we are rounding it up, most of the time, in terms of 1 inch. So, more or less, in terms of 25 or in multiples of 25 millimeters. But for the sake of our discussion, let's say, we will be uh, uh, rounding off in dimensions natin in multiples of 5 mm. So in this case, let's say this is 440 millimeters. So this is 440. Now, we can now compute ano yung magiging 
effective debt din na talaga natin. Obviously, magbabago yung D kasi in-adjust natin yung H. Okay, so pwede naman actually, ito, yung 386.7, kasi minimum clear cover lang naman yung 40. So, obviously, mas nalaki yung clear cover. But, let's use yung, let's just use the minimum clear cover to determine the effective debt D. So, in this case, that is 440 minus, again, yung one half ng bakal minus the clear cover. So, in this case, so we have 440 minus 10, sorry, 440 minus 10 minus 40. So, that is 390 mm. Okay, so let's use this. No? Then, let's use in dimension. Oh, sorry, wala pa pala tayong dimension. Okay, kasi di pa lang yung nakumpit natin. Balik tayo dito. Okay. So, we have uh, D. In this case, sabi natin 0.75. Yung kanina, no? So, that's 0.75 times 386.7. So, that will give you 290.025. So, let's just say it's 290. Okay, so, let's use uh, 290 mm by yung dimension natin na 440. While using an effective depth D of 390 millimeters. So, meron na tayong dimension. What we need to do is to determine AS. So, normally, we can use yung kanina natin na computed. Okay? So, pwede natin gamitin yan. But, pwede rin natin gamitin yung bumalik tayo sa formula natin kanina to compute for the value of Rn. So, but, but, but to simplify, no? to simplify, Ang gawin natin is, let's just use yung raw natin. So, we have raw equals 0 0.013933 equals AS over PD. So, in this case, we have AS to be, so we have uh, 0 0.013933 times two, uh, 0 0.29, oh sorry, 290 times 440. So, we have 777.85 square millimeters. So, equal yan sa area ng isang bakal multiplied by kung ilan yung bakal. So, normally, we will just divide the area of the steel reinforcement. So, ano ba yung area ng isang bakal? It's just pi over 4 times the square of the diameter. Meron na tayong um, diameter. Assuming na 20. So, that's just times 4 divided by pi divide by 400. So, more or less, this is uh, 5.66. No? Or that's approximately 6 bars. Tingnan natin kung kasha. Parang feeling ko hindi. No? So, if that's 6 bars, it should check natin kung kaya ba nung beam natin. Kasi meron naman tayo given na required spacing. So, ang spacing natin between bars must be at least no, at least 25 millimeters or the diameter of the bar whichever is larger so meron tayong 290 na total no? so more or less kung kukunin natin yung kung pasok siya sa 290 ilan yung bakal anim plus spacing no? ang, ang spacing kung may anim na bakal may limang spaces so ta tapos ang spacing 25 so, so magkabilang gilid meron tayong 40 mm na uh, clear cover. So, plus 80. So, as you can see, that's 325. Hindi ka siya sa 290 natin. So, it's either we increase the section, pwede natin gawing 325, or pwede natin gawing 2 layers. Again, it is upon the discretion of the designer. Okay? So, mas madali kung ang gagawin natin is lalakihan ko na lang yung dimension, 325. In that case, kung papansin nyo, pag nilakihan ko yung dimension, there's a tendency na mas magiging malaki pa yung moment capacity ko. In that case, ma-assure din natin na mag yield yung bakal natin. Kasi yung concrete natin nilakihan eh. Pero kung ang gagawin ko is gagawin ko siyang two layers, okay lang din naman. Okay, ang problema natin, magbabago na naman yung height natin. So in this case, ang gawin ko na lang para mas mabilis is lakihan na lang natin yung dimension.
Okay. So, remember, possible siya, especially kung wala namang restrictions. Wala namang restrictions kung ano talaga yung lapad. Kasi sa, sa in, in real life, no, when we are designing, there's already an architectural plan. So, kung may architectural plan, meron na siyang binibigay sa atin na width. So, ang problema na lang talaga natin is the total height. So, minsan may total height na rin. So, kung pang may total height, kung limited na kagad yung dimensions natin, tapos hindi, ka hindi, hindi kakayanin yung load, doon pumapasok yung paglalagay natin ng double reinforced. But since we are just discussing single reinforced, iniwasan muna natin yun. Okay? So, ang gawin natin is, let's use uh, 325 mm by 440. Okay? Then, we will be using AS to be running the 20 mm bar. By the way, there is another way, no? Kung, for example, masyadong malaki yung anim na bakal, there's a tendency na palitan din natin yung dimension ng bakal. So, for example, ang area natin is 177.85. Pero ang gusto kong gawin is, ayoko ng masyadong maraming bakal na anim. So, pwede mong lakihan yung diameter. So, pwede ko siyang gawing 25. Kung 25 siya, that will give you times 4 divided by pi. Sorry divide by pi, then divide by 625, that's 25 square. So, kung papansin nyo, apat na lang yung bakal natin. So, kung apat yung bakal ko, so we have 4 multiplied by uh, 25 na yung de bakal, no? plus tatlong spacing na 25 plus 80. So, actually, pasok na siya. Okay, so you can also do that. But let's say, Ang gusto kong bakal is 20 mm lang. Halimbawa, it's stated in the problem that you need to use 20 mm. So, wala tayong choice. But again, if it's not stated, remember, assumption lang naman natin yung 20 mm, you can uh, change the bar diameter. But let's say, I just want to use the 20 mm bar diameter. Okay? Halimbawa, medyo masyadong mahal yung ano. Let's, let's consider other parameters. So, in that case, meron na tayong dimension. So, ano na yung susunod? Yun na ba yun? Siyempre, hindi pa. Remember, uh, we need to investigate kung yung nakuha talaga nating dimension is enough to carry the load. Why? Kasi meron pa tayong self-weight na we need to consider. Okay? So, let's say we will be considering the self-weight. So, yung self-weight natin is obviously the unit weight of the concrete in according to NACP, no? The unit weight of concrete to be used is 23.6. So, some books are using 24, 23.54, but we will be using 23.6. Kasi yun yung nasa uh, minimum design loads, chapter 2 ng National Structural Code of the Philippines. Multiplied by the cross-section, which is 0 0.325 meters by 0 0.44 meters. And as you can see, we converted the section into meters. Kasi yung unit weight natin ng concrete is in kilonewton per cubic meter. It's 23.6 times 0.325 times 0.44. So in this case, we only have 3.3748 kilonewton per meter. So pwede natin siyang idagdag dun sa load natin kanina. That's 1.2 of uh, initially, that is 10 and 15. No? So that's 10 plus 3.3748 plus 1.6 na 15 which is yung line load natin this is now your superimposed this is your self weight this is your line load so wu is just equal to so that's 10 plus uh, sorry 1.2 times 10 plus 3.3748 plus 1.6 na 15 so that will give you 40 40.0 5 kilonewton per meter. So in that case, you can compute for the actual load that is just equal to WL squared over 8 again. Yung length natin is 6 meters, so that's times 36 divided by 8. So we now have here 180.22 kilonewton meter. So dapat, yung makuha natin na ultimate moment capacity must be greater than the actual load. And ito yun. Okay? So, let's compute, no? So, paano ba natin kukunin yung MN? So, drawing natin yung section. 
So in that case, the section is 325 millimeters. This is your AS. Okay. This is 390 based on our computation kanina. Okay. Let's have the stress diagrams. So this is the Whitney equivalent compression block which is 0 0.85 of Fc prime. Again, this is your C, which is just equal to the stress multiplied by the area of the concrete na tatamaan. Ito po yun. So this is distance A. Okay? Then yung distance natin, ito yun, Which is the neutral axis. So this is your force T, which is just equal to As FY. Again, we are to assume na mag-yield yung baka natin. So, this is D minus A over 2. So, again, uh, let's check kung mag-yield ba talaga yung bakal. So, ang assumption natin, assume first that uh, still yields. No? Tension still yields. So, we have here C equals T by taking the summation of forces horizontal, then we have 0 0.85 of Fc prime AB equals ESFY. So we can compute for the value of A. So yung AS natin is just uh, 20 squared times pi times 6. Okay, lagay na rin natin dito that your AS is 2,400 pi. Ngitin ko lang ha. 20 mm tapos uh, so that's 20 squared times pi divide by 4 times 6. So, nalimutan ko atang i-divide ng 4 kanina. So, this is 600 pi. I think what? 20 squared times pi divide by 4 times 6. Okay, that's 600 pi. Okay? Then, we can multiply by Fy. Ang Fy natin kanina is 345. Okay? Divide by 0.85 divide by 20.7. Divide by B, which is 325. So, ang A lang natin is 113.72 millimeters. So, since, again, this is equal to beta C, we can compute for C. Beta is just 0.85. Since Fc prime does not exceed uh, point, ah, sorry, 0.28 MPa. So, divide by 0.85. So, that will give you 133.79 millimeters. So, we can now compute for... FS or the actual stress acting on the steel. So that is just 600 times D minus C over C. So dinerive na natin yung kanina at last on the last video. So that will give you um, D is 390 minus answer divided by answer times 600. So 1148.99 MPA. And as you can see, it's greater than FY. Therefore, tension still yields and at the same time it's greater than 1000 therefore it is tension control so we will be using v equals 0 0.90 okay so let's now compute for the nominal moment let's say this is just fs if fy multiplied by d minus a over 2 so your nominal moment is we have again 600 pi times 345 times the distance of 390 minus 113.72 over 2. So that is 216.64 okay, kilonewton meter. And your VMN is times 0.9. That will give you 194.98 kilonewton meter and as you can see your MU is less than VMN so yung actual load natin na uh, 180.22 is less than the resistance capacity of 190.94 therefore section is adequate so in that case we can say that we can now use uh, 325 mm by 440 mm with tensile reinforcement of 
6 na 20 bar diameter. So that is how we design singly reinforced beam. Ngayon, for any uh, other possible videos, for example, we will be considering um, irregular shapes. Let's say we have a triangular and for T-sections, we will be considering that on our next video. So please uh, subscribe on the this channel para ma-notify kayo kagad for uh, new uploads and videos for future examples and another, and another topic.